On the previous episode, desperate times called for desperate measures, as I stand at a truck stop toilet for an hour and a half, charging my laptop and processing footage. Well, it's the next morning here. I'm extremely tired. I'm also sunburned and have hundreds of mosquito bites. On uh, There's one section on my arm here. I've got four inch by one inch section. I've got 31 mosquito bites. For some reason, they just love my elbows. I spent another night up here in the Coquihalla because it's just so much higher elevation. It was nice and cool. I try to find somewhere also up in the mountains tonight near Revelstoke. I just pulled over on the side of the highway here and there's this incredible scene over here with a couple of mountains, a valley, a uh, river and green grass. This looks just absolutely amazing. up with gas for the first time in a while here since the Vancouver Island where I was paying all, basically two dollars a dollar 99 point something in Vancouver Island a dollar 66 here in Kamloops I'm just at Costco here and I need to get some food it's the most important thing about van life here is assess your space first then go buy stuff like I'm kind of topped off here I know there's a bit of space back there pretty much maxed out here man that thing sounds like a real gas hog We've only got the meat chili here. Yeah. The Costco on Vancouver Island has more vegan options. They've got chili and some other things. This is pretty slim pickings. I just got three things, but if anyone's wondering, I'm basically allergic to every type of meat or have some sort of adverse reaction. I get significant weight gain from pretty much every type of meat. I know this because I've spent 20 years testing my body. Uh, I would eat the same meals and then just change one thing, like change fish, uh, fish chicken, pork, etc. And only after I removed all that stuff that I ended up losing about 100 pounds. Uh, I decided I'm actually going to do a human guinea pig series that I'm going to put on my uh, main YouTube channel. I've got a YouTube channel called Earth Titan and I'm going to be kind of discussing all this stuff because I've done fasting now for eight years, weight loss journey. I just test out products all the time like the activated charcoal or uh, fluoride free tooth toothpaste. I haven't been uh, been to the dentist in eight years. Uh, let me know if you guys are interested in that stuff though, but I'll be doing kind of more of those like I fasted for eight years, here's my results kind of videos and I put those on my other channel. Yeah, that's why I'm always looking for vegan stuff. I've been vegan for eight years now. I basically have to. So that temperature in Kamloops is off the charts. This is kind of like the forest fire capital of BC. I'm gonna go have a shower and then I'm gonna get out of this town, <laughs> go back up into the mountains, go towards Revelstoke. This discolored patch on my elbow has over 50 mosquito bites from Needle Peak. While we're at it, these van life episodes are supposed to show the journey. I'm going to bring you along on my weight loss journey as well. Because of a combination of crippling IT band pain and emotional eating, here's where I'm at now at 206 pounds, which is down 20 pounds from back in March when I was 226 pounds. I made it to Salmon Arm here. I just went to this bulk barn and I just found a whole bunch of vegan pasta that was 75% off. They're Alfredo and cheesy mac and cheese, that kind of thing. I also got three packs of this vegan jerky, which is nice, 75% off. So it was a dollar something for each of these. Clearly there isn't very many vegans in Salmon Arm. One of the ways I keep my clothes clean on the go is I use a simple bottle from the dollar store and vinegar and I just spray my clothes down with that. See the reason I do that is because the washing machines, the laundry mats, they charge like eight to ten dollars to wash clothes. It's just preposterous and then the same thing to dry it. So for example here, here's my uh, hiking shirt from the other day and it really smells. I just give it a nice little spray. I typically do this when I go into a library, so it has a few hours to kind of just sit and my vehicle is going to smell like vinegar, I can air it out pretty quickly afterwards. So I'm in Sycamuse and I found this public library, it looks pretty nice, so we're going to go in there and it's open until 7. I think after they kick me out I'm going to just try to find a place to sleep by the lake here, it's got to be a little cooler than anywhere else. Alright, three hours of editing done and it's still really hot out here, it's 7 o'clock, it's so muggy. I'm getting a little worried now about sleeping in this kind of... Uh, conditions. I was looking at going down to the, the water here and camping out there. Let's just go there right now and check it out 
and maybe it's cooler by the water. So we've got staff parking over there, permit parking over here. We actually have street parking over there, but it says no overnight. It sucks because it's beautiful over here and it's cooler over here. Yeah, I gotta head over to Revelstoke now because there's just nowhere to park here. Maybe in the city, down by the water, I kind of was looking for something private. So we came down to the public dock. Uh, there's a beach here. It's nice here, but not a place to sleep. Let's go to Revelstoke. So just as I was pulling out there, there's a sign that said they will tow your vehicle between 11 p.m. and 9 a.m., something like that. Overnight, basically, you get your vehicle towed. So after driving around through the uh, town of Revelstoke, I found just this rest stop, which is in town. It's on one side of the bridge. Got some big, beautiful peaks over here. Just massive. This is all right, this will do for the night. So this truck just pulled up. The guy started peeing right on the back of, basically the back of that guy's red van. And they're just stinking up the air here that, you know, I've got all the screens on my vehicle here. They're just stinking up the neighborhood. All to pee in the bush when there's a bathroom over there. What a bunch of pricks. Good morning. I had a little bit of a rough night here in uh, Revelstoke. It was a little bit hot up until maybe four in the morning. First off, a tip for all you van lifers, when you're picking a spot in a hot situation, you wanna find where the east trees are. This is where it's gonna be coolest. See this Jeep here? Their vehicle is gonna be so much cooler than mine or all these other vehicles. This is gonna be good until after the sun kind of gets over till two o'clock. We had mosquitoes here last night and I used my bug screens, which you can see here. They're just like these magic mesh from the dollar store. I've got an entire video on how to build this out and it worked perfectly well. No mosquitoes got in. I, I basically had this folded down inside a little bit like that so I could get some airflow and keep the mosquitoes out and then the fan going the entire night on me. I actually brought a big fan up in my uh, cargo bin there, but I can't use it because my EcoFlow is broken. That EcoFlow busting really has screwed me up, especially in hot situations here. I'm still waiting to hear back from their customer service. Oh, and FYI, if it looks like a pit toilet, it is a pit toilet. I find sleeping in a situation like this, half of it is getting everything set up, having airflow, having your fans. And the other thing is mindset, because I can easily get into a situ situation where I think this is a coffin. I had that on my first night, I had a panic attack. Uh, I had to pop out of my bed, I was gonna quickly bust out of the doors and I realized I need to unlock it or the car alarm's gonna go off. Fumbling, I can't find my key, start to have another panic attack and I'm like, okay, just relax. And so I found the key, opened the door, got some fresh air and chilled out. And it was actually a cool night and stuff, I just hadn't slept in a tight space like this for a while. So if you're gonna build something out like this, um, in like a CRV or a SUV, that kind of thing. Be warned that you're sleeping with only like a little bit of space above your head. 
Um, there's definitely different ways you can build this out that give more space, you'll just lose storage. Normally I'd be heading to hike something today, but I just can't even dump the stuff off my cameras. I can't keep things charged because my EcoFlow is broken. So I'm going to head to the library, get everything dumped on there, get a video out for you guys, and then maybe I'll find a really nice camp spot right next to the glacier I want to hike and do the hike tomorrow. So I just pulled up to the public library and let me show you the perfect parking spot. There's a raven that's pissed off up here. Oh, there's two of them. See them right, right, right there? You see this giant parking lot for the public library and off in this corner there's basically three spots here under these giant trees so I'm gonna be parking here so my vehicle will stay cool all day. The temperature's got to be at least 10 degrees cooler over here versus just out in the sun and when I get back to my vehicle all my like fruit and and food and stuff won't be all cooked you know if you have chocolate or anything like that melts in your car so it's important to really pick where you park if you're gonna be spending the day somewhere. There's a dog in that stroller. I just stopped off at the Brock Loop. It uh, looked like a great place to camp until I uh, just saw the big sign there in uh, blue, no overnight parking. I don't know why. Look at this. Why not let people just stay here? Now I have to go find somewhere else. Like I'm tired. I'll give you a little look here at the river. Pretty nice. Amazing glaciers up there. So the plan is to go hike this glacier tomorrow. It's just up the road. Um, if there's a bunch of overnight, no overnight parking anywhere, then I don't know. It's just like, it seems like most countries are not made, made out to be uh, friendly for people doing van life. It's like, you have a lot of money and you know, you have, uh, you're able to get a permit to do camp at one of these campsites, then you're fine. But if you don't have a lot of money, it's like, you're not worth anything to anyone. So, I don't know, it's frustrating. Government doesn't step in and like do things for van lifers, people who are trying to save some money, they just don't care. So I went down to the trail of the glacier parking lot and it was just loaded with permits and no parking and blah 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 so i came up here i looked on iOverlander, it came in clutch just up the road two or three minutes is this milner roger pass uh there's just like outhouses garbage cans recycling things tables and it i don't i gotta go look and see if there's any no overnight but it's basically just a place to park so hopefully this will be good it's flat too there's a bunch of little groundhogs here if you look at these guys There he is. It's also a giant cannon. Whatever that thing is over there. And look at these mountains. Wow. There's mountains everywhere. <laughs> that outhouse. Woo, that reeks. If Satan had a smell, that would be it. <laughs> Just off the side of this parking lot is the abandoned rails yes. trails. Interesting. Looks very uh, overgrown. The White Death. It basically says a single avalanche killed 62 men. They were dispatched to build the railroad. Got a friend here. Check this out, the sun is hitting the, the mountains up there so perfectly. So I moved across the street, you can see that park uh, over there just behind me, that's where I just was. And I'm just in a big gravel pit. Wow, look at the glacier over here, incredible. On the far side over there, there's a no parking for 30 meters sign. There's also a sign back there, but it has all the same stuff about no winter climbing or whatever up on certain slopes, etc., etc. So this is good to go. There's definitely uh, no no parking signs here, and it's not a part of that little park over there. What's weird about that little park over there is there's a sign that says no overnight camping. It has a picture of a motorhome and a tent. It doesn't say no overnight parking, it says no overnight camping. That's where it gets confusing because all these other places have no overnight parking. Like the last three I went to said no overnight parking. 
and this is the one that says no overnight camping right next to a little trail that goes up into like a, a meadowy kind of uh, area where the trees are have been burned or cut down or something so it really makes it seem like you can't camp there there's a tent so for that reason I was gonna stay over there but I saw an eye overlander someone parked exactly right here and now I get why there's like water just down here it's beautiful smells good there's no no parking signs like this seriously smells amazing down here and there's a little creek here somewhere I can get some fresh water so I'm gonna fill up my bag here and get some uh, water filtered so I found this little patch here it looks like I can actually get down here and get right to the water Alright, so I've got some uh, cooked macaroni here and we've got a packet of vegan cheese. It's actually a vegan Alfredo. I don't think I've had Alfredo, yeah, probably nine years. I'm also going to add some, uh, a can of tomatoes, okra and corn just to kind of put a little bit of vegetables in there so I'm not eating just straight Alfredo. Well, that looks good. Nice mix of, uh, yeah, tomatoes, okra and corn. There we go. If you're wondering, it's this here, the Dea mac and cheese, but it's the Alfredo. Mmm. Oh, that's so good. Mmm. Oh. The tomatoes are perfect in this. If you've never had okra, it's actually a very creamy vegetable, and it's perfect for mixing into sauces like Alfredo or mac and cheese. It's very slimy, most people find it off-putting, but put it in something like this, oh. I'm gonna sit and have a nice meal here on my little desk, and uh, I'll see you guys in the morning if there's nothing else. 